My talk to you is quite personal, and it, you will, you will, it will touch on some themes in Northern Ireland that you will recognize. But first, we're going to start with a word. Does anybody know what it is? It's pronounced Jeffrophobia, and it means a fear of bridges. <laughs> and here's a bridge. Now, this bridge is over the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland in the United States. And when they built it, it was so scary, because you can see it's quite slender at the sides, that a lot of people were too afraid to cross it. So the locals started calling it the bridge to hell. Now, you can see, look, 4.3 miles long, 186 feet high. You can actually get a tall ship underneath that. So can you imagine driving over this bridge? So what happened was, some people drove across no problem, looking at the fantastic view, watching the boats, looking for their destination. Others got halfway across and froze. They couldn't go forwards and they couldn't go backwards. And then others couldn't even get onto the bridge at all. They were too afraid. So a solution had to be found. And the solution was, and is until this day, because I did a story on this bridge 20 years ago, if you're afraid, someone will get into your car at the end of the bridge and drive you across. Now, our lives are rather like bridges, aren't they? We go from here to there, opportunities and obstacles. This is my life, and we tried to make little bridges, but you, you get the idea, don't you? Uh, I come from Belfast, yes. I went to London, then from London to Belfast again. Then from Belfast, I went to Tokyo. Then from Tokyo, I went to Frankfurt. Frankfurt to Washington, D.C., when I did the story about the bridge, and Washington, D.C., back to London, where I am now. Now, a career like that has loads of opportunities, but it also has many obstacles. I started my career at a time when it was mostly male-dominated, the media, particularly here in Northern Ireland. So, first day I went into my broadcasting newsroom, Someone looked at me, a male colleague, and said, hmm, as in, oh, it's a girl. There's a great job going in the library. So I thought, okay, day two, don't be having any ambition. You're from Northern Ireland, you have a Northern Ireland accent, you're going nowhere. So I didn't take the job in the library, and I went everywhere, <laughs> yeah? Now, the, along the way, just like people were helping others over the bridge, I had some help as well. And strangely, it was mostly from women. Firstly, when I was at school and I wanted to be a journalist, it really wasn't a job for a girl in Northern Ireland all that time ago. And people were saying, be a teacher, be a secretary. No, I wanted to be a journalist. And the person who gave me the confidence to do that was my English teacher. She believed in me. Therefore, I believed in myself. And I wouldn't be here where I am today if it hadn't been for her. The other people who've helped me along the way are my family. I couldn't have done without my family. Even if they didn't see me for months, apart from on TV, they were always there at the end of the phone and they were always there in full support. When I was traveling around the world, I had my two daughters with me. So my mother, who's here tonight, used to travel with me sometimes to look after my children if I was on assignment. Because you also have to realize that it wasn't just me traveling on this journey. I had my two daughters with me, so they were traveling on these bridges and these challenges and this journey as well. They were changing schools, they were leaving their friends, we were moving countries, all those sorts of things which are very disruptive. And during that period, I actually built myself a bridge of guilt in my head. You know what we're like, if anyone who's got children, are we doing the right thing? Will they be okay? Is this school right for them? But as they grew older, they actually demolished my bridge of guilt. And they told me that they wouldn't have changed our travels and adventures for the world. The other things that happened to me along the way, let me just give you an example from Tokyo, for instance. I had a male, or a female translator, and I would go to these big meetings that were all male, and it was as if I hadn't walked into the room. I changed the translator to a man, and suddenly I was somebody to talk to, because I had a man working for me. I kid you not, this is the very early 90s. 
The other thing that happened to me throughout my career is I've experienced all the things that a lot of women have experienced. Ageism, sexism, and gender inequality. Ageism was the one that hit me hardest. As a woman gets towards 50, particularly in the media, we disappear, both in front of the camera and behind the camera. A man can age in front of a camera, whereas a woman can't. A wrinkle on a man will be seen as maturity and experience. A wrinkle on a woman is considered old. So uh, just imagine you're approaching your 50s, you're in your early 50s, and you're dealing with all the aspects of getting a little bit older anyway. Perhaps you're thinking, you're going, I'm about to have the menopause, or you're having the menopause. All of those things that we have to deal with. And then suddenly, you're being sort of slightly sidelined for younger models. I haven't got anything against younger models. We all were there, and we all came through. But there is a time and a place. Now, this got so bad for me. It went on over a period of two years, and it got so bad for me that I woke up one morning and thought, I'm going to give up my job. Now, bearing in mind everything I'd done, and where I was, and how hard I'd fought for this, this was a huge decision. Except after I'd had a cup of tea, I suddenly thought, I'm going to give up my job. It's my job, hold on, I'm not giving it up. Then I had to go through this difficult process of how do I address this? So I did go through the process, and it was difficult, but I claimed my place. I kept my job. I stayed there, wrinkles and all. But the reason that happened as well is there was support. There was a support network from female colleagues and female friends and my family. Obstacles can be overcome, but we've got to be strong enough to do them. You've got to be strong enough to drive across that bridge. And if you can't, there's nothing wrong with asking for help. This is me and my sisters. Uh, I grew up actually about five miles from here. So this is on the left, this photograph is with me. Look at the lovely curls, what happened to them? With my grandfather um, visiting him in Hollywood. He was very dear to me. And this is me with my two sisters. And it's actually taken me 60 years to get to where I am today. Some of the, um, you'll get some nice old photographs here. Some of the challenges I grabbed with both hands. You know, it's like, great, I'm having that job. I'll do anything to get that job. Some of them I sort of thought, so I suppose I was halfway across my bridge. And you know the way we women say things like, oh, can I really do this? Oh, will I be good enough? Will it be okay? Of course it's going to be okay. Of course we can do it. Why shouldn't we able, be able to do it? So there we go, I'm going around the world, and I'm crossing a lot of bridges at that time for female journalists as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm going into jobs and I'm going into areas that perhaps they wouldn't have been there before. That's John Major's The Back of His Head, by the way. I was very glad the photographer took my face and the back of his head. Uh, I was in Washington, I was in Tokyo, and I covered some of the biggest stories in the world. But again, right along the way, one of the things I always did, I, was, I always helped other young journalists, male and female, but particularly young female journalists coming through who perhaps didn't have the confidence. And it's that sort of help that I would love to have had when I was a young journalist, when I first walked into that newsroom and was told to get a job in the library. So here we are. Um, I've now been a journalist for 40 years, so it's been fairly successful. And I've covered everything that I've wanted to do. And I am very, very pleased to report it's no longer male-dominated. So we have a very good gender mix now. What we don't have, though, is e gender equality and pay equality. So we have to still fight for those things, not just in my industry, but in all industries. We have to fight against any form of ageism, any form of sexism, and definitely any form of gender pay inequality. I left the BBC in April this year. It was my decision. It was on the 15th of April when I gave my last broadcast. And one of the reasons I left was because, having been a journalist for 40 years and also been at the BBC for 20 years, I thought it's time to do something else. It's time to have another career. 
Because when you think about it, I'll come back to that one in a second, we're up against a lot as women. Madeleine Albright, the US Secretary of State former, said that when she was rising up through the ranks to become US Secretary of State, she felt that she had to be better than an equivalent man. So you could have the same qualifications, but you had to be better. And I felt that right through my career. I could be sitting or standing beside a man with exactly the same qualifications and exactly the same experience, but I had to be better. And she said the same thing. And what she said was, you can be a mediocre man, but you can't be a mediocre woman. And she was right. I'm crossing a new bridge this year, as you can see from the birthday cake. <laughs> I was 60 in September, and I've decided to start a new career using all of those skills that I've gained in the last 40 years as a journalist. Because you know what? We women are living longer, we are healthier, and we are ready for any challenge that we face as us. My grandmother would have been retired at 60. I want a whole new career. And as it says on the cake, 60 is really the new 40. So I'm going to take you back to the bridge, if you remember from the beginning, the scary bridge. Because when you cross your bridge, as a woman in particular, and you're feeling successful, and you're feeling you can go across your bridge, turn around. Reach out your hand to the next woman. And if we all do that, we'll build our own bridge, and then we'll be invincible. Thank you very much.